There are many unexplained phenomena in our lives. Some we can capture evidence of and hope to one day explain. Others are more elusive. Conscious initiated alien contact, remote viewing, telepathy. These all involve subjective experiences and defy our current understanding of the natural world. As such, it's easy for scientifically minded people to write off reports of such phenomena. After all, it is quite easy to fool oneself, especially if you want to believe. But it's also easy to let one's bias go unchecked, and just because something can be faked does not mean everything is fake. If you keep an open mind, stay tuned, and explore what many would call woo with me, you might be surprised at what you find. Many people cite consciousness as the mechanism behind psychic abilities. This, in my opinion, overloads the investigation. We need not explain the nature of consciousness to explain the phenomena associated with it. We may never know the true nature of consciousness, but I do think we can get to the bottom of psychic phenomena. The latter can be distilled down to information transfer. And while this information is presumably received and processed by your consciousness, it doesn't mean consciousness is responsible for the transmission of the information any more than consciousness is responsible for the transmission of the sounds produced as I speak. But if not consciousness, then what? Psychic information clearly is not being transmitted through light, sound, smell, taste, or touch. If such abilities really exist, there must be some other way to transfer information. Enter extra spatial dimensions. I can move my arm up, down, left, right, and forwards and backwards. But what if I could move my arm in another direction? Into the fourth dimension. Well, since our senses cannot peer into this fourth dimension, it would appear as if my arm suddenly disappeared. And somewhere in this unimaginable fourth dimensional landscape, a waving arm would appear. It's hard to wrap one's mind around this, but it's looking more and more like there really is some place, dimension, all around us, which we are unable to coherently perceive or access. In fact, these extra spatial dimensions seem implied by the very mathematics of quantum mechanics. Calculations of the waveform of particles in superposition invoke variables in another dimension, the so-called imaginary component of complex numbers. A recent paper shows that instead of just useful abstractions, the so-called imaginary dimension and complex numbers are needed to accurately describe our world. However, if an extra spatial dimension actually does exist, it's clearly not as accessible as just moving one's arm into it. But that doesn't mean we aren't connected to it. A 2016 paper in the peer-reviewed Cognitive Neurodynamics Journal suggests that we, or at least parts of our brain, exist in the fourth dimension. That paper, Towards a Fourth Spatial Dimension of Brain Activity by Tozy and Peters, boldly claims, Experimental and theoretical clues allow us to conjecture that the brain activities, at least some of them, are embedded in a torus lying on the surface of a hypersphere. If this is true, if parts of our brain structure really are hyperspheres, four-dimensional spheres, then we literally extend into that fourth dimension. Instead of moving my arm there, a little part of my brain, all of our brains, parts undetectable except through inference of brain activity, exist in this dimension. If Tozis and Peters are correct, our brains evolved into this fourth dimension as it enables us to consider different possibilities simultaneously, essentially upgrading our mental processing power. 
as such, our species is just beginning its evolution into four-dimensional space. The transition is analogous to far back in our evolutionary tree, when single-cell organisms started becoming larger, allowing for more internal organization. These simple life forms utilize 3D space, but have no real ability to sense or interact with it. If we are the simplest form of life in the fourth dimension, it begs the question, what would a fully evolved fourth dimensional life form look like? And has anything in our own evolutionary tree climbed that high? Would they be just as unimaginable for us as we would be to a single-celled algae? We may just be inching around the floor of the fourth dimension, while unknown complexity, life, lurks above. Perhaps they look down on us, barely noticing, just as we look down on a mossy trail. Perhaps, when we engage certain mental modes, we appear differently to those fourth-dimensional beings. Maybe some of these modes are appealing or interesting to our more evolved cousins, which cause them to take pause and interact. Perhaps, just as mycelial networks connect much of the plant life on Earth, a similar network connects all of humanity across the floor of the fourth dimension, allowing for signal transfer, telepathy across time and space. Without being actively aware of this fourth dimension, such impulses would seem random to us. But maybe we are on a evolutionary path with more faculties in this dimension. Perhaps some of us are further along in this path, in tune with the source of these impulses. That is a lot of perhaps. I'll leave you with just one more. Perhaps, as we learn more about our physical world and the makeup of our own brains, we will be able to resolve these unanswered questions. I'll be on the lookout for such answers, as well as other unanswered questions. Consider subscribing and sharing this with others if it interests you. I'm Rather Be Squidding. Thanks for your time.